Attention comedy musicians and comedy music fans. The Logan Awards are taking open nominations for outstanding comedy songs and videos released last year for this year's awards. Did you release a comedy song or music video in 2021 or have a favorite comedy song or video that was released then? Then nominate it for the Logan Awards today. The Logan Awards are essentially the Comedy Music Awards, sponsored annually by the Funny Music Project and are presented in three categories. Outstanding Original Comedy Song, Outstanding Parody Song, and Outstanding Comedy Music Video. If you have a comedy song that was released in 2021 that you'd like to nominate for 2022's awards, head to loganawards.com and click the Nominations tab at the top. There is a minimum and maximum of five nominations per person. Hurry! Nominations close this year on January 22nd. For more details about Logan himself, the awards, and more, check out loganawards.com. Help us commemorate this year's best comedy songs and music videos with a trophy, the way they do with every other form of entertainment. But if you want your favorites to win, you have to nominate them by January 22nd, 2022. Get your nominations in now at loganawards.com. Brought to you by thefump.com. Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian. I'm a comedy musician and comedy music fan. And if you're a comedy music fan like I am, uh, hopefully you have paid attention to the ad that came just before the beginning of this video for the Logan Awards. The Logan Awards are the Comedy Music Awards, and they are taking open nominations up until this Friday. Uh, so for any song that was released in 2021 is, uh, uh, is eligible, I almost said is available, which is also technically true, but uh, if it's a comedy song or a comedy music video that was released in 2021, it's eligible to be nominated for a Logan Award. Just head over to loganawards.com and click on the nominations button at the top to nominate your favorite comedy songs from last year for this year's awards. You know, a comedy song that uh, might have been released by somebody you're watching on his most recent album, Illinois, available now at insaneian.bandcamp.com. Shameless plug. Anyway, yes, welcome. It's the first new video of the new year. Uh, it's been a little bit. I've been a, a, little, uh, a little out of things recently. Oh, great. That, that stopped that recording. We're going to try that again. Yes, now that's recording again. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties abound. I got a new camera for Christmas that I'm not using yet because I haven't had a chance to even mess with it yet. Uh, and so, two videos this week. There's this one and then another one on Friday. Um, but uh, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. At the beginning of the year, I was a little burned out. So I, I, I'm not doing my usual two or three videos at once in one video. We're going to do one video, one reaction, and then another separate video later on in the week, this week anyway. Um, and the first video we're doing is really unique. It's a, a subpar rap battles of YouTube, not a epic rap battle of history. This is coming to us from We Scheme, who I believe... I've only known as a reactor. I, I wasn't aware that they were a rapper, although, given their outfit usually, I should have guessed that they were a performer. And uh, they're doing Weird Al Yankovic versus Bo Burnham, two comedy music titans going at each other in a subpar rap battle. Uh, I have to preface this. I... I am fully prepared for cringe on this one. Uh, not just because it's somebody kind of aping on the style of epic rap battles of history. We've had people do that before and do it successfully. But I, I'm more erring on the side of cringe on this because when talking about comedians and especially giving impressions of comedians and what people perceive their style of comedy to be tends to be a little biased in their perception or imitation of it and i i'm 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 worried is we'll just put it that way but regardless of all of that let's dive into this maybe i'll be pleasantly surprised uh it looks like they're going with the classic owl look which is the curly hair and glasses and mustache as opposed to al's modern look which he's had for 
probably almost over 20 years now, which is no glasses because he got LASIK corrective surgery and no mustache anymore. Uh, also, I'm recording this on the day that they announced a Weird Al Yankovic biopic called Weird, the Al Yankovic story, featuring Daniel Radcliffe of Harry Potter as Weird Al. I'm excited to see it. If you weren't aware, that is the same title that they did for a fake trailer for a biopic about Al, featuring Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad as Weird Al in that one. That was done 12 years ago. I didn't realize it was that long ago, but yeah, 12 years ago they did that trailer, and now they're actually turning it into a real full-length movie. Uh, obviously, both of these are done by Funny or Die, which means it's not exactly your typical biopic. It is going to be, I will say, heavily uh, non-true. <laughs> heavily influenced, heavily, heavily penned, heavily written, heavily made fun of on style of biopics. Because Al's kind of led a fairly innocuous life other than being called weird. So uh, they, they're they going to make up stuff to make it more interesting. Because, you know, they had to they had to do that for his Behind the Music special on VH1. They had to give him something to... Oh, my, my fourth album only did, went to 117 on the Billboard charts. Drama music happens. Oh, UHF didn't do as well as I'd hoped, drama music. All of these are piddly things in Al's life. You know, yes, he's sprung back. Every album they, he releases, they call a comeback. And then, you know, not to talk about Al all the time, but now Bo Burnham had released last year one of his best specials ever about being an artist in the pandemic called Inside on Netflix, which, yes, I'm sure many people are nominating songs from that for the Logan Awards. Hey, there's a plug for the thing at the beginning. Yes, this is a long intro. Get over it. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> so, yeah, Bo Burnham's been in the news a lot more recently, too. So, you know, both of these guys, still titans of their game. Uh, anyway, it's a lot of blabbing about stuff that a lot of people don't care about. But this is a comedy music show, so... I care about it. I'm sorry. If you fast-forwarded through all of that, you missed stuff, but not really. But maybe... Vote for the Logan Awards. I released a new thing. Anyway, this song is 2 minutes and 27 seconds long, and I've already been talking for over 5 minutes. Yeah, I'm rusty. Whatever. I'm going to pause a lot, too, if this is your first time watching these. I react. I don't just ooh and ah. I, I talk and discuss. But anyway, let's dive in. We scheme. Weird Al versus Bo Burnham on the subpar rap battles of YouTube. Let's see what this is about. Subpar rap battles of you two. Weird Al Yankovic. Yep. Versus. By the way, I love the cardboard accordion in that shot. <laughs> I have I have Al's box set, which is shaped like an accordion. Um, but also I have... I'm a Weird Al fan. Of course I have accordions. Do I know how to play any of them? Of course not. Bo and they're giving the Bo Burnham look from inside, which is the bit inside from... Quarantine all the time, long hair, beard. Oh, oh dear, what do we got here? Another YouTube kid who's afraid to be queer. Where the fuck telling your family that you are gay? The front of the poster job of woke culture. Okay. Hmm. Remember what I was saying about cringe before? Uh, of all the things, personality-wise, of Al to complain about another artist doing... Being woke sure as shit ain't one of them. Uh, they're going with the very high-pitched nasal connotations for Al's voice, which I get. I mean, early days of Al, especially the one they're depicting here, which is, you know, the glasses and the mustache era Al. He was very nasal in his uh, pre uh, performance. He sang very nasally, very much in the, in the head voice. And uh, the front of the face voice, mostly. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh, of all the things for, for Al to complain about, that doesn't fit who Al is. Yes, he has used language in the past that doesn't really hold up a lot nowadays. Um, but again, he also 
was using that language because everybody was at the time and uh, doesn't perform those songs anymore because of that and has come out saying, yeah, I know these songs don't hold up because of that. So not really the best example in a bar there. Comfy in my vegan skin. Yeah, Al's vegan. That's true. That's good stuff. Have a panic on, panic attack on stage. Did Bo Burnham have a panic attack on stage? I'm not super familiar with a lot of Bo's work. I've seen all his specials, except for Inside, because as a comedy music performer, I'm afraid it'll break me. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm... I'm not familiar with his work a lot outside of, of his specials. I know he had that MTV show that only lasted as a season. He was originally just a YouTube star that found his comedy fame that way. And uh, But I'm not familiar with a lot of his, his stage stuff. I know he directed a movie recently, too. So, you know, Bo's a good guy. For you beef, man, you better just eat it. Gonna need a relief plan for this edge, Lord Elitis. That's... I mean, we're, we're obviously going to get references to songs, and Al's Eat It is, is obviously going to be a prevalent one. I kind of wish the beat had accordion on it. If we're going to have... If you're going to have styles of music, especially if it's going to change up for, for Bose verse, because that's what they do a lot on the ERB style. In, in, the, ERP bat in the ERB battles, the each rapper kind of has their own flavor in the beat you know like in the in the last uh battle of the johns that erb just did the john mcclain versus john wick versus john rambo all of their beats had instrumentation that was evocative of their movies you know john had the big bombastic stuff and wick had more uh synth layers through it and and uh, Rambo had more string instrumentation through it, so it's you know I were no no I think the strings were actually in the in the John McClane stuff kind of emulating the the Ode to Joy that's heard throughout the first movie. Um, so having this kind of be a, kind of a generic hip hop beat, not really adding the flavor of those artists to that, uh, it is a subpar rap battle. Again, uh, going against uh, character type, yeah, okay, a lot of Al stuff is dad humor. Absolutely, I get that. A lot of it is very pun-flavored. We like puns on this channel. I'm a fan of the stupendium, let's get real. Um, but that kind of attack, yes, it is a rap battle. We're going to have battle bars in it, I get that. Bo's a fan of Al. <laughs> it's not... I mean, he... I've seen the clip from the special where, <laughs> you know, there's the Venn diagram of, of Weird Al and Malcolm X, and Bo says he's in the middle of that. <laughs> so, you know, he, he is a fan of Al, so I, I don't know if I would believe that kind of thing. It's like, it's like the battle between uh, Stan Lee and Jim Henson. They come out attacking each other, but at the same time they're like, why why are we fighting? I like what you did and you like what I did. Why are whatever. So, you know, it it's something that doesn't quite ring true. It's this that's why this battle already felt cringe for me before even hearing a bar from it. King, a coffee in my White and nerdy king, that was the other thing he you know, bringing up song mentions. Uh, Al had uh, the number one record. His his last album debuted at number one on the Billboard charts. Calling he's had a career that has lasted four decades. The only person to have been on the Billboard charts for as long as Al has been Madonna and Michael Jackson. Calling him a hack, it's just unfounded. His career has lasted longer than most of the artists he's parodied. Am I taking this too personally? Whatever. Pathetic little fun, no such a cringe memento. I got cancer from your Joseph suit, Dr. Demento. Nice shout out to Dr. D. Still kicking it. 
still doing his, show, his uh, radio show after 50 years. We just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Dr. Demento show. Uh, I have been played on the Dr. Demento show many times. Uh, got cancer from your act. And that, you know, that's early Bo Burnham wordplay, kind of. Uh, I think this is the same guy playing both characters. I think that's Wee Scheme as both Al and Bo. Because the facial structure is the same. Uh, and the voice sounds similar. You know, he's pitching it up for Al's voice, but, uh, I don't, he doesn't quite have the same kind of flow that Bo does. Bo's, one of Bo's biggest songs and one of his first songs online was I'm Bo Yo, which is him just ridiculous spitting, just making rhymes and non sequiturs and just shock for shock value because he was a kid. Um, and that kind of thing should probably be influencing his verses a little bit more. And we know Al can rap too. Al is a, a great rapper, not only having done parodies of great hip hop songs, but also having been on an ERB song with a verse written by Zach Sherwin, who has great lyrical dexterity as well. Um, I'm not feeling these impressions as much as I'd like to be. Um, and again, the beat didn't change up when it switched to bow. But again, it's a subpar rap battle. Maybe it's supposed to be kind of meh. I don't know. We'll see. That that accordion file being an accordion is probably the funniest thing in this video. That accordion folder with a picture of an accordion on it being his accordion, that's that's genuinely funny. So far, the presentation of the video is just looking like an ERB thing with a lot of green screen movement in the background and, and cloning of the main character going on around things. But, uh, it's, it's, it's not hitting for me yet, guys. For the stage, Lord Elitist. Hey, look, it's the boomer humor train. Imagine seeing talent in a hack so fucking plain. Pathetic little fun, no such a cringe memento. I got cancer from your Joseph suit, Dr. Demento. I'm a real world talent and I'm making an impact. But when people buy your albums, they all want to get my back. Be less than comedy, but you want to give their laughs. Stick to parodies, I was what you're barely good at. I, this that bar I took personally. <laughs> I'm not even gonna front on that. That bar I took personally. <laughs> yes, Al's albums are half original, half parody. His originals are personally, in in my personal estimation, usually better than the parodies. The parodies are what get the airplay because they're recognizable for people. But his his originals, his parodies get the airplay. I, I said that right. His parodies usually get the airplay because they're recognizable, but his originals are pastiches or style parodies. They're not direct parodies of a specific song, but they are done in the style of a specific artist and usually are ev evocative of certain songs by that artist while not being a direct parody of that song. And the amount of talent he has to not only write in a other artist's style, but have his band reproduce that sound and have it sound like that artist is phenomenal and he's had the same band work with him on that uh for over 40 years so again yeah i took that a little personally uh because i do the same thing i write parodies and originals and i split my albums evenly on those the same way al does um but uh yeah saying saying al's albums uh yeah no it's a battle i get it i get it they're supposed to be vindictive toward each other because it's a rap battle uh, I'm not buying it, and that's why it's hitting it so cringe for me, because it's it's two comedians and two comedy musicians who I hold in such high esteem uh, saying things that I know that they wouldn't say to each other. <laughs> I know that's really weird. I know that's a really odd thing to, to harp on about in this battle, but that's, that's plain what it is to me. Probably the best joke you ever made, dummy. It's removed from reality, and that's what makes it funny. Comedy lessons from you, boo a pass, dude. I was making bigger hits in your career before your parents accidentally made you. That was a really weird staccato rhythm on that delivery. Like, it, it almost went past the 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 layer of the bar. Like, it, it like, kind of went almost over the beat on it. 
that's really weirdly structured bar. Good that's probably the best joke you ever made, dummy. It's removed from reality. And that's what makes it funny. Comedy lessons from you blew up past, dude. I was making bigger hits in your career before your parents accidentally made you. Yeah, that, that seemed like it was like a few too many words to fit in the line right. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a it's a decent diss back, and it's absolutely true. Uh, but uh, I I it it seems like it was he tried to shove too many words in. It's it's like putting ten pounds of meat into a five pound sausage casing. It just it was too much. It it seemed to overflow the bar. There was a lot of words going on there that was trying to be really staccato, really rapid fire. And because he's doing this impression of Al that's pitching his voice up and trying to do it nasally, it kind of slurred some of the words. I do that myself. I am fully aware that I am not a fast rapper. I know this about myself. I know this as my weakness. And sometimes I trip over my own words, even when I'm talking on this show, even when I'm just discussing things, I tend to have, have, have blah, blah, blah. and it almost sounded like that's what he did in that verse. Um, that's a decent Al face. You're missing the chin though, bro. As a chinless wonder myself, I relate. That's why I grow the beard, so I give the illusion of chin, because otherwise it's just bottom lip and then neck. There's no middle ground. Accidentally made you. I'm a, yodeling jokester. I'm a yodeling jokester is a decent internal rhyme scheme there. In an, a yodeling jokester, a maestro, an icon. It's It starts out decent. Don't know if I would go yodeling, though, because I don't think Al has ever actually yodeled on any song, not even any of the polka, polkas. No, no, I take that back. He, there is a yodel he who in a polka. I take that back. But one time, maybe two, is not does not a yodeler make. What am I saying? Yeah, that's that's where it is. Won't let this boring dull bloke stir my flows. He really kind of muffles that in the in the delivery. In your career before your parents accidentally made you. I'm like, you're only Joe Sturm, I'm sure I won't let this boring dull bloke stir my flows as he cries. Yeah, as he cries on. Like, Icon, as he cries on. It's kind of a forced rhyme. Um, but it just... Just the way that it, it it flows through that sentence structure, he kind of he kind of trips over his own tongue. And as a person who does that myself, I can relate because I I recognize it because I do it too. Um, but it it loses that punch doing that. I saw people stuck inside and make a giggle when the lights on. You act like you were down when no one laughs without a joke, son. <sighs> uh, I'm Boyo, and I'm the greatest rapper ever. Rest the kids, whether they ever heard a weird out or not. Okay, so there's the I'm Boyo kind of delivery, but he's basically just doing its Boyo and changing two or three words. Like, he's parodying himself like he imagines Al would do, I guess. Interesting. Sounds like never. Looks like everyone forgot you. Making like your label while I drop you. I will leave this... <laughs> Making like I, your label while I drop you. Al's label didn't drop him. He dropped the label. <laughs> Al had a record contract for 14 records, which is insane in the record industry to begin with. And the fact that that lasted as long as it did is amazing. And that Al was relevant for all that time, too. But, yeah, there are people, there are reactors on YouTube all the time who've never heard of Weird Al, who are reacting to his stuff now and discovering it and discovering how much they love Al's stuff. So I wouldn't say that, yeah, some people haven't heard of you. I'll give them that. Not everybody knows who Weird Al is. But to say his label dropped him is completely false. Al dropped his label because he went 14 albums and went, okay, that's why the last album's called Mandatory Fun. Because it was mandatory that he deliver that last album. And it debuted at number one on the Billboard ch charts in 2014. So it's his number one record de debuted at number one, which in the history of comedy music 
has never happened except maybe with an Alan Sherman record in the 60s. So it's, you know, a long time coming for something like that. And uh, Al, once that album was done, he's like, I fulfilled my contract. Now I'm going to do whatever the hell I want, which is doing a lot of voices in cartoons, touring a whole lot, and now releasing a movie about himself. So, yeah, all right, though. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he dropped his own label, not his label dropped him. He decided to release the music on his own. He's just going to release singles from now on, not doing an album structure anymore because waiting till he had enough songs to fill an album made a lot of those songs kind of lose their place in pop culture because he's waiting for the album to come out. A song that he parodied six months ago is not popular on the charts anymore sometimes. So if he puts it out right when the song's hot as just a single, it's still hot when the new original's hot. It's a better uh, idea, a better structure for releasing songs. It's what a lot of the comedy artists that I know do. A lot of what people on YouTube do. They don't do albums at all. They just do YouTube videos striking while the iron is hot because it's in that pop culture zeitgeist. Um, whatever. Again, taking it a little too personally when I know it's a battle rap. I, I, I'm trying not to, but I'm failing. See, because I want to. You just disappear because no one wants you. Another rise of us so the has been spot you. Another rides the bus, trying to fit another one rides the bus as a song title into a into a diss decent. Clinging into the past, can't imagine man is magic. You think that I'm the sad one? Your current state is tragic. Brat. Boys, let's not get too carried away. You're both just terrible. But these island boys are here to play. Okay, so we've got Lonely Island coming in on the third verse. I guess that was supposed to be Andy Samberg, and he's playing. Yeah, this is this is clearly just we scheme as everybody. Uh, I didn't recognize him because he's usually wearing a a mask, but uh, it's obviously the same dude as everybody. So he's got Andy Yorma and uh, and Keeve in the background there. We know uh, that they don't think Al sucks because uh, <laughs> not only have uh, they done photo shoots where they've dressed as Al with Al as if they were a cult, but, uh, but, <laughs> but they've put Al in their movie Pop Star, um, and they have thanked Al in the liner notes of their album, so yeah, we know that they don't hate Al, absolutely not. Yes, okay, it's imaginary, it's somebody playing characters, I get that, but it loses that credibility to me. And, yeah, that's the point of these battle raps. Yes, I get it. With epic rap battles of history, it's characters that would never meet that probably do like each other. Or if they met, they probably might have. Um, but, you know, Batman doesn't hate Sherlock Holmes. I'm sure he respects him as a detective. Uh, that kind of thing. Yes, okay, I get it. I'm going on way too long about this two-and-a-half-minute song. I realize that, but that's kind of what I do. I kind of try to pull these apart and dissect them and come at them from the perspective of somebody who does this kind of thing. Uh, but because I guess I'm so close to the subject matter is why it's not working for me. You may all have a different perspective on that. You may actually enjoy this battle. I wish I could say the same. But let's see what Lonely Island does. Have they switched up the beat on this? Have they uh, tapped into the same way that... Lonely Island raps, because Weird Al actually raps, Bo Burnham actually raps, Lonely Island is mostly rap. Are they going to tap into the specific style of that artist, or are they going to have it be just kind of subpar again? Let's find out together. Hey! Lonely Island, bitch, Andy, Akiva, and the Yorma Trio, carried as a nail so we died when we go, they don't want us back, we like bitch, yeah, we know. Alright, that wasn't, that wasn't terrible, wasn't totally in their wheelhouse but it's not it's not a it's not far from it it's actually slightly reminiscent of it you've surprised me all right we did it movies win it dropping records and you know they spin it yeah what about these tweets oh damn they did it alfred i heard about your movie man you bankrupt the whole studio you should have stuck with batman the little pouty boy over there what's his name we don't care I didn't even jizz in my pants when I all right, they're, yeah, it's good. It's riffing off the jizz in my pants, uh, which was one of their songs. And his delivery is, Yorma's delivery on that is how Yorma's delivery is in the song. 
I dig it. Okay. This is actually elevating this track for me. This this surprise entrance here. I saw your chest bad. Then there's Mr. Pedo Stash, Porto Hair Guy. You just do the creep and you walk by. Roll up to our Another Lonely Island track, Do the Creep, which had John Waters from Baltimore in it. I'm from Baltimore. That was an awesome uh, get for that song. It's very, and they all dress kind of like John Waters in it, doing the creep. It's a great song. I love comedy music. Yeah. Play it that we love, guys. Open up the box. Something funny in your mouth for the first time. Oh. Yeah, they wrote Dick in the Box on SNL. We, we know. Who got, who's next? You decide or not, because I don't really trust your Okay, that is the first legitimate actual laugh I've gotten on that one. <laughs> you decide or not, because I don't really trust your judgment. That's fair. Uh, what was... What was... Something funny in your mouth for the first time. Music produced by uh, Anno Dummy Nation and We Scheme. Special thanks to the Discord Writers Room patrons and channel members. Uh, associate producer, join Patreon and help create the next battle for We Scheme. Uh, yeah, that was clearly the same guy playing everybody in all the shots. That was, I'm guessing that was We Scheme as everybody. And uh, I can't say I was feeling it, y'all. I can't say who I can even pick as a winner in that battle. Maybe. Like, the disses were kind of all over the place for me. For both Al and Bo. Because... That's the thing with, with epic rap battles of history versus a subpar rap battle of YouTube. That's, that's the thing that I will say is the main difference between ERB and any of its imitators. Um, ERB does the research. They'll go through and study the person that they are writing the rap battle as, so that a lot of the things that they say in the battles are factually accurate. Nothing about any of the bars that Bo and Al traded were factually accurate. Al wouldn't give a shit if somebody was being woke, because Al himself is rather woke. Uh, Bo claiming that Al, you know, people don't remember him or uh, respect his albums or that his label dropped him all completely factually inaccurate and provably so <laughs> um, I guess really the only ones who could come in that, that would win the battle might have been Lonely Island but also only because for me they actually kind of captured the feel of Lonely Island rapping uh Al's rapping and and Bo's rapping weren't really indicative of what those artists can do as rappers. Um, so and the because of that, that made the impressions fall flat for me. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's how I feel about it. All right. Yeah. See, that's we scheme usually has a mask on, and I, I don't didn't recognize him as those people, but I'm guessing he that was him as, as everybody. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, I'll be back Friday with another reaction, or earlier if you're part of my Patreon, uh, and uh, links and all that to this video are in the description below links to the Logan Awards, all sorts of other good stuff like that. Uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll see us again soon. Bye. See us again soon? Yeah, see, I stumble over my own tongue too. It's fine. Just try not to have it in a song. Now Al is hunting me. He thinks that I'm the Kira. I met a man, he's like me, only kind of weirder. He likes coffee with the sugar man is in the sweets. He's picking on the net, he's always in his bare feet. So now I'm on the task force, trying to catch myself Living that double life, no one suspects me here but L. And now I have a girlfriend, she has a death note too Started as a cubby